Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation that we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. Hashtag live if you're joining us live. Hashtag record if you're joining a recording. Hashtag share to get this out on your pages. Also, make sure that you also share the Pastor Doug page and not just this conversation, because when you share the Pastor Doug page, people can follow, we can, they can join it, uh, they'll get notifications when we go live so that they can be part of the Pray First family as well here on the Pastor Doug page. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are flying through the year 2022. November is almost over. December is upon us. Thanksgiving, check. Christmas is next. New Year's, so much going on, so many different uh, meals, places to be. It's just a crazy time of year for people, but it's exciting. And I just come off a of vacation myself. I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit today because I learned something in the mountains. I'm not gonna tell you all about my bear exploits, but they were many and they were fun. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Corrine. Good morning, Kat. Good morning, Becky. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Leanne. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. Let all the first time guests know that you are glad they are here. Good morning, Lana. Good morning, Raymond Duffy, the mayor of Maywood. Good morning, Daryl Manon. Good morning, Brandy Bell. Hey, cute girl. I need your phone number, Brandy Bell. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Michelle. All right, so I just, I've got to share with you something that happened to me uh, on a trail, uh, looking at the mountains and talking with my family. And it has a lot to do uh, with where I am going uh, in my spiritual journey with the Lord. Uh, I think that it's going to help you. And today I'm also going to be giving a very, 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 everybody hashtag very, a very clear glimpse into where Cross Point Church is going in 2023. And I know some of you go to different churches, and that's okay. The Lord is, you know, doing things all over the world, and He's doing some things specifically in your heart. Good morning, Michelle and Tasha and Christina and Patty and Greg Jones. Uh, he's doing some incredible things, and I did have a great vacation. Uh, we enjoyed the mountains, we enjoyed family, we enjoyed turkey, we enjoyed so much. Also, if you can, go ahead and share this page out. Good morning, Kelly Saldo. Good morning, Donna Rowe. Share this page out right now so that your friends and family can see this particular conversation. It's, it's really that important. This is, this, is, this is so good. It seems like it's so obvious once I learned it, but it's not that obvious. So, I'm walking through the mountains. I'm looking at the beautiful evergreen trees. It has this smell of fresh pine and a cool breeze. It wasn't cold. The sun was shining really bright, but it was just cool enough to enjoy. Can you smell that, that pine scent, that fresh, almost, I heard someone say, I think it was my mother-in-law, Angie Cooper, say it smells like Christmas trees up here. Um, and you can see things from on top of the mountain that you can't see from down in the, in, the, in the valley. So it's a different perspective when you're up a little bit higher. The air changes when you're a little bit higher. Um, it's just, it's incredible. So again, I want to say this, and I want to launch right into this. I'm giving you a glimpse. Cross Point Church, you're going to get a head start into 2023 by watching Pray First over the next uh, several weeks. Big time. What God is doing, where God is taking us, what God is sharing with me. Uh, but specifically, here's the thing I learned in the mountains. As I'm looking at the mountains and I asked my father-in-law, Kevin, um, how tall do you think these mountains were uh, once, how tall they were, once were. Because the Smoky Mountains, the Appalachian or Appalachian, however you say the mountains, are some of the most ancient mountains in the world, much older than the Rocky Mountains. And they are much smaller today than they once were. They were once 
very, very large, equivalent to the Rocky Mountains or, or more. But they are much smaller, they are much older, and, and there's some reasons for that. But I was asking, how tall do you think they were, Kevin? And he said, I'm sure someone has figured that out. Uh, but most people spend too much time trying to figure out how tall something is or how ancient something was or time dating something or you know, trying to figure out this and that, uh, that they fail to even look at it. And that was my first, uh, that was my first aha moment. We fail to look at something because we are so determined and enjoy it because we're so determined to define it. We're so determined to explain it. Uh, we're so determined to fix it. We're so determined to grow it. So we fail to uh, take the time to enjoy what's right in front of us. But the next thing he asked me is what sent me into this, oh boy. So God is talking to me on this trip about the direction for myself, my family, and Cross Point Church. And this is the question he asked me. He said, Doug, do you know what limits the growth and height of a mountain? Do what? Do you know what limits, and i got to turn this, this heater off, it's burning me out of this room. Do you know what limits the growth and height of a mountain? And I thought, this is surely a joke. Kevin is just, you know, and I said, there's probably lots of reasons, but I bet you've got one for me. Because I figured that the joke was coming. And uh, Kevin said, no, there's, there's a real reason uh, there is an explanation to the limit of the height of the growth of the mountain. I'm going to share that with you because it has everything to do with your limit and your height and your personal spiritual growth. The height of the mountain is limited by four things. I'm going to focus on one because it's most pertinent to the conversation we're having today. The height of a mountain is limited to one, erosion. That's spiritual, isn't it? Have you ever felt like part of you just washes away? That as time goes by and you can just take so many swings and you can just take so many setbacks and you can just take so many uh, disappointments that uh, some of the pinnacles that you've seen in your life have eroded? Erosion limits the heights of a mountain. Number two, and this is the one we're really going to focus on because this is most important. The height of a mountain, the how high it can get, is limited by the strength of the earth's crust that supports it. I want to say that one more time because this is the focus of our conversation. And this is the direction of Cross Point Church in 2022. This is the direction of Pastor Doug. This is the direction of the Bell family. This is the direction <laughs> of spiritual growth in 2023. Doug, do you know what limits the height of the mountain? The strength of the earth's crust that supports it? No mountain can grow any taller in height when its foundation will not support it. Number three, talking about a physical mountain, the composition of the mountain, what is it made of? You know, I could say that spiritually as well. What are you made of? And number four, gravity. There's always something pulling us down. Have you ever noticed that there seems to be a plateau there seems to be a ceiling that you can't break through spiritually. It seems like that you keep bumping up against a spiritual ceiling that you can't seem to grow past. Everybody hashtag grow past. In 2023, you, myself, our church, we are going to spend a lot of time taking steps to break through this spiritual ceiling. We're going to take a lot of time to consider 
What is it that I keep bumping up against? Why can't I ever have a breakthrough in this area? Why does it seem that I have reached my growth potential? Why does it seem that I can't get past this? You know, there is a growth ceiling in American churches. Most churches, matter of fact, I think it's something like 90-something percent of churches in the United States have less than 65 people. If you grow past 65 and get to 100, the growth ceiling at 100 is much more difficult to break, and then 200 is almost a concrete growth ceiling. Do you know that the largest churches in America in the 20,000 uh, in attendance range is has a growth ceiling that, that churches in America do not get past 20,000 in attendance? But do you know that same ceiling does not exist around the world? That there are churches that have 100,000 plus in attendance on the weekend? There's something that we need to talk about. And it's not just about numbers and growth in church attendance. It's your spiritual growth. You have a spiritual growth ceiling. And no matter how far you reach up, you won't climb higher and you won't grow further and you won't grow faster and you won't grow larger. The reason we can't break through the ceiling is because we don't have a ceiling problem. We have a base problem. We keep trying to add things on top of a mountain. We keep trying to grow in knowledge. We keep trying to stack new things. But our base will not support it. I talk about destiny and how you will only go as far and as fast and as high with your destiny as your character will support it. Because, listen, there is one reason and one reason alone that people live with a dream but never walk in their destiny. They dream about something more. They dream about higher. They dream about further. They dream about growing spiritually. But they never walk in that destiny because their character will not support it. It doesn't matter how many things you lay on top. You will never raise because your crust will not support the weight. So I'm going to say that one more time, then I'm going to start into some of the most simplest, foundational, crust-building things. In January of 2023, we're going to launch a spiritual concept to strengthen the stakes of our spiritual tent. And we're going to do some things to reinforce the foundation so that when God adds new things on the top, the bottom will support it. You cannot just go put a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth story on a building that's foundation was poured for a one-story, one-family residence. It will crush it. And I've seen people crushed by new spiritual knowledge, by new spiritual things going on, and, and they get real, real excited until it crushes them. So, number one. Here we go. <laughs> number one. This is not a new spiritual excitement because we're not working on the top of the mountain. We're working at the base. I'm not trying to uh, give you something new to think about. I'm telling you that we've got to drill holes into the earth's crust We've got to pour much deeper footing. God's telling us to strengthen the stakes. Strengthen the stakes of our spiritual tents. Strengthen the foundation. This is going to take a lot of work. It's going to take intentionality. Because if you ever want to break the ceiling up here and you want new things and new revelation and new experiences with God and new truth and all this stuff, you know, we all just slobber over, we're going to have to go deeper. <laughs> it's 
in the foundational truths of God. Number one, I'm going to give you this quickly, and then I want to pray for you. Number one, pray. <laughs> you guys learn how to pray. <clears throat> Gonna have to learn how to pray. Number one, hashtag number one, pray. And I say, oh man, I thought you. I just told you this isn't gonna be new. But it doesn't matter what kind of car you have in the driveway if you don't drive it. And it don't matter what kind of faith you have if you don't exercise it. And you will never go further than your ability to pray. Your intentionality to talk to God. Your intentionality to be quiet and listen to God. Pray is not a laundry list of I needs, I wants. Lord heals. Prayer is a communication of direction, intentionality, ideas. Prayer is a a love letter to God as you listen, as he speaks to you. Prayer is more than <clears throat> your mountain will never grow higher than your ability to learn to pray. Because if you think that you are going to support your destiny without prayer, you are extremely prideful and you don't have a concept or a real good idea about your own ability to do crap because you don't have any ability, you do not have the strength, you do not have the, uh, the, the, the foundation, uh, you, you, will, you, know, you will jump as high as your little physical legs will let you. But God has a supernatural power for breakthrough, and it involves you listening to him. It involves you following him. Prayer is where you get direction and clarity. Prayer is where you give up. Prayer is where you let go. Prayer is where you decide you're going to have to learn to pray. 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verses 8 through 12. Let's read it fairly quickly. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king. Okay, so God had, uh, had uh, given David uh, an upgrade. <laughs> God had... Uh, given David, uh, you know, when you have a job and you get a better job. Why can't I think of that word? It's a very, very common word. Promotion. Anytime you get a promotion, God had just given David a promotion, the enemy comes. Every single time you take a step with God, the enemy's going to come. I promise you. I, no, I guarantee it. When the Philistines heard that David had been promoted and anointed king over all of Israel, they went up in full force, and this is how the enemy's going to come against you. Everybody hashtag full force. When the enemy, not a person, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood or rulers and principalities. We wrestle against principalities of darkness in high places. We're not, we're not wrestling people. We're not fighting people. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king, his enemies came up in full force they, to search for him, but David heard about it and went out to meet them. <laughs> now the Philistines had come and raided the Valley of Rephaim, which is the Valley of Giants. So David inquired of God. Everybody hashtag inquired. What does that mean? David prayed for direction. David asked for a plan. David sought God's will in that particular battle on that particular day against that particular enemy. But you'll find out that tomorrow the exact same enemy comes against David and David goes and inquires of God again. Why? Because yesterday's answer is not today's answer. Yesterday's direction is not today's direction. Yesterday's manna is not today's manna. Yesterday's clarity is not today's clarity. Yesterday's strategy is not today's strategy. Yesterday's ideas are not today's ideas. Yesterday's permission is not today's permission. You and I have got to learn to walk by faith, and walking by faith means that we don't keep taking steps based on yesterday's plan. We continue to inquire. He was going to be 
searched for. He was going to be attacked by the exact same enemy. God's going to give him the ability to overcome that enemy today. But tomorrow, had he done exactly what God told him to do today against the same enemy because he thought, well, it works, he would have failed, he would have lost, and he would have been defeated. David inquired of God. I'm going to tell you right now why many of you can't break the ceiling. Many of us can't break the ceiling because we're still trying to fight in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. We're still trying to fight in Tuesday's revelation from God. And God has revelation for you today on Wednesday, November the 30th, 2022. But you don't know it because you didn't ask him. See, the last time he gave you permission to buy the car. He gave you the resources to buy the car. He told you where to buy the car, and it was all a blessing. If you go back and do the exact same thing today, you may find that the blessing of yesterday is the curse for today and emptiness for tomorrow. Do not make a move, church, without inquiring of the Lord. Do not take a step. Do not take an action. Do not assume. Do not depend on principles for every single day's manna, revelation, knowledge. When the Philistines heard that David had been promoted, they came to search for him, but he went out to meet them. When the Philistines raided the Valley of Giants, he's, he's facing giants, David inquired of God, shall I go attack them? Shall I go attack the Philistines? Here's the more important question David asks of God in that time of prayer. Will you deliver them into my hand? Will you deliver the, your enemies into my hand? Can you imagine being David's counselors? Can you imagine being David's support crew? Can you imagine being his strategists? And David is told that the Philistines are on the other side of the hill. And he says, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to disband the meeting I, I, I can't talk to you right now. I'm going to go into the tent by myself. What exactly are you going to do in there, David? Are you going to take a nap? What, what, what exactly are you going to do in there, David? You're going to, I'm, I'm going to go inquire of the Lord. I'm going to ask him, how shall I do it? Shall I do it? And how shall I do it? That's two things we need to add to 2023. Matter of fact, you can add it today. When should I do it? And how shall I do it? How shall I do it? When shall I do it? It's so important. Immediately David goes into the tent to pray, and the Lord answered him, Go, I will deliver them into your hand. So David and his men went up to Baal, Perazim, and there he defeated them. And he said, As God, as the waters break out, God has broken out against my enemies. Other word, breakthrough. Breakthrough. So now the place is called Bear Perazim. The Philistines have banded their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them. David was a great warrior. I'm telling you right now, cross point. God has shown us some things. We are becoming much more intentional about those things. I know that some of you may have think that we flipped up the, the Sunday mornings just to make something new and something. It's what God told us to do. We, we didn't just change the order of church just to change the order of church. Our element points in our service is so that we can intentionally focus on prayer, communion, baptism, testimonies, special songs, special prophecies, special things, so that we'll intentionally take some of our service and do the elementary things. That's why it's called element. The elementary things. The things that strengthen the crust, strengthen the foundation. Things that support the destiny of Cross Point Church. David was an incredible strategic battle strategy maker. He was strategic in battle. But he didn't make the plan. He would inquire of God. He defeated his enemies, but his success in battle was prayer. You've got to pray. 
I don't mean occasionally, and I mean intentionally shutting it down. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Every day, if you don't schedule it, it won't happen. Prayer is not natural. I want to be crystal clear, and then I want to pray for you. Bible studies, mentors, pastors, church attendants, devotionals are all great but they are not a substitute for prayer. And I can tell you right now, you have learned far more than you will ever be able to use because you don't have a ceiling problem. You have a base problem. And your foundation will not support it. Final decisions. Listen to me. You hear verses throughout Scripture, and it's, they're absolutely, obviously true. It's God's Word. That in a multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. But listen to me. Listen to me. Final decisions are not made in a multitude of counselors. Final decisions are made when God speaks through prayer. Final decisions line up with the rhema spoken word of God and the logos written word of God. Some of you are facing decisions, final decisions, are not even between a husband and a wife. Final decisions come from God. And if you and your spouse are in a contradictory state, you pray, God, give us clarity. God, give us unity. God. And you keep praying. And you keep praying. And you keep praying. Can I read you one more thing? Luke chapter 5, verse 16. This is Jesus. But Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place and prayed. You notice the first word of that sentence is not the first word of the sentence. But Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place. And pray. Jesus did what? I heard somebody say that Jesus never told people that he didn't have time for them. That's not true. That is absolutely not true. Jesus didn't heal everybody that needed healing. Verse 16, Jesus didn't talk to everybody that needed talking to. Jesus didn't stop everything every time that somebody needed something or wanted something. Luke chapter 5, verse 16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely. You know why the first word is but? Let me read verse 15. Yet the news about Jesus spread all the more so that the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. In other words, there were a lot of people pressing in on Jesus. And Jesus would say, no. Not going to happen. But, in response to all those people pressing in with sickness and all, but Jesus chose to withdraw to a lonely place and pray. Let me tell you something. If the incredible things that Jesus saw and did required that his crust be strengthened, required that his base be strengthened, required that his foundation be strengthened. Don't you think ours does? Heavenly Father, I pray that you bring everybody back tomorrow because what we're doing right now is we are drilling holes to pour deeper footing. We want to do what you did, Lord. We want to do greater things. That's what you said we would do. We're not seeing greater things. We're not even seeing what you did. So it's not that we don't want to reach higher. It's not that we don't want to grow. It's not that we don't want to, our, our, to break through the ceiling. It's not that we haven't learned hundreds and thousands of new truths that make you go, ah! But doesn't change our growth. It's because we've got to go deeper. 
Lord, strengthen our base in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll continue this conversation. It went a little long today. You know how I am, but I'm also back from vacation. I hadn't talked to y'all in a long time. I'm very excited about where we're going. You need to keep in mind some things like prayer, strengthen the stakes. It's about the base. It's not about the ceiling. You need to think about growth. You need to think about the things Jesus did. You need to think about uh, prayer. You need to ask yourself, are you praying? Do you pray? Do you pray? Not just talk every once in a while, not when something pops up, but do you have a specific time to pray when you ask God when, where, how, what, and, and, and then listen, and then be quiet and listen before you go to sleep. I love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye, everybody.